Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how rod cells and cone cells act as light receptors. You should then be able to explain why rod cells and cone cells have different levels of visual acuity. In the last video, we saw how the Pacinian corpuscle acts as a receptor for pressure in the skin. In this video, we're looking at light receptors in the eye. Now, the first key idea you need to learn is that we find light receptors at the back of the eye in a layer called the retina. There are two types of light receptor cells. These are called rod cells and cone cells. Both rod cells and cone cells convert light energy into an electrical nerve impulse. So scientists say that rod cells and cone cells act as transducers. Nerve impulses from the retina then pass down the optic nerve to the brain. I'm showing you here rod cells in the retina, and there are over 100 million rod cells in a human eye. Now a key idea you need to understand is that rod cells function with another type of neuron called a bipolar neuron. Several rod cells signal to one bipolar neuron via synapses, and scientists call this retinal convergence. Each bipolar neuron then signals via one sensory neuron to the brain. Each rod cell contains a light-sensitive pigment called rhodopsin. When light hits the rod cells, this causes rhodopsin molecules to be broken down. The rod cells then cause the bipolar neuron to depolarize. If this depolarization is greater than a certain threshold, then a generator potential is triggered in the bipolar neuron, and this triggers a nerve impulse to pass down the sensory neuron to the brain. Now, rod cells are very sensitive to low light intensity, and there are two reasons for this. Firstly, rhodopsin does not take a lot of energy to break down. This means that it can be broken down by low intensity light. Secondly, because several rod cells are connected to the same bipolar neuron, this means that the signals from these rod cells add together. Scientists call this summation. This increases the chance that the bipolar neuron will exceed the threshold value and produce a generator potential. So rod cells allow us to see in very low light intensity. However, because several rod cells signal through one bipolar neuron, the brain cannot distinguish which individual rod cell absorbed light. So in low light intensity, the brain perceives a low resolution image, and scientists call this low visual acuity. Also, the image perceived from rod cells is black and white. Okay, I'm showing you here a cone cell, and the human eye contains around 6 to 7 million cone cells. Unlike rod cells, cone cells respond only to high intensity light, and there are two reasons for this. Firstly, each cone cell connects to an individual bipolar neuron. This means that each cone cell must trigger the generator potential in its bipolar neuron, and there's no summation between different cone cells. Secondly, cone cells contain the light-sensitive pigment iodopsin, and iodopsin requires relatively high light intensity to break down. So for these two reasons, cone cells respond only to high-intensity light. Now, there are two other key features of cone cells that you need to learn. Firstly, the human eye contains three different types of cone cells. Each type of cone cell contains a different form of iodopsin, each responding to a different wavelength of light. And this means that the impulses from cone cells can be used by the brain to form colour images. Secondly, as we've seen, each cone cell connects to an individual bipolar neuron. This means that the brain can determine which individual cone cell has absorbed light. Because of this, the images produced from cone cells are very high resolution. Scientists say that cone cells produce high visual acuity. Now, we find the highest concentration of cone cells in the part of the retina called the fovea. The fovea is where light is directly focused by the lens. So the fovea receives the greatest light intensity. In contrast, rod cells are found around the edge of the retina where light intensity is lower. However, as we saw before, rod cells are adapted to function well in low light intensity. 
Okay, so hopefully now you can describe the roles of rod cells and cone cells.